Today I have three buckets. All three of these all came from the dump. And I rescued them and I'm gonna upcycle them and make them into some farmhouse theme planters that I can have outside in my garden and on my deck or patio. Um, the first one that I'm going to do is an old sap bucket. And it's kind of a galvanized pail, kind of aged, but uh, I'm excited to turn that into a planter. And, sorry, it's so noisy. And an old bucket, a metal handle. I'm gonna turn that into a planter. Beautiful and rusty. And last, this planter. And it's got a little bit, this, got, this has got a wooden handle on this end. It's missing on this end, so I need to fix that up a little bit. It needs to be cleaned up, but I have some great ideas. So I'm gonna get creating, follow along, and make sure you hang out till the end so you can see what I made with them. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so these were all grabbed out of the metal bin, and I saw potential in them, and I think I can make them pretty. I'm just gonna wash them up to get all the grime and dirt off them. My favorite paintbrush, the Wooster. I'll put a link down below in the description and up above because it's a fantastic paintbrush. And I'm gonna put two coats of my homemade chalk paint all over this whole bucket. This homemade chalk paint recipe is really fabulous, so I'll also put a link down below and up above here for that recipe. I'm going to put on my Farmer's Market graphic. This is available in my Etsy store. I'll put a link down below. You can grab it. Make sure you use the code SAVE50 on all of my graphics and you can get 50% off of everything. Download them to your computer and use them whenever you want. And I printed my own graphics out on these napkins. It's a really easy technique. I also have a tutorial for that. I'll put that link down below and up above here. And I'm just removing all the edges, all that straight line edges and make it kind of ragged so it blends into the pail better. I've got it on a plastic sleeve. I'm going to put it upside down and put water all over it so it will um, be easier to manage when I put it onto my sap bucket. I find if I was just gonna put this napkin without having it doing this technique right on the bucket, it seems to really go wrinkly and gets lots of air bubbles. This seems to eliminate a lot of that by doing this technique. You have to be very gentle because it'll rip really easy, but I'm just kind of pulling it out just to get any little wrinkles out of it, let the water soak in, and then I'm gonna take a cloth and dab up all the excess water. And now I'm gonna use my Mod Podge mat and I'm gonna put a thin layer over the whole area where I'm going to put that graphic on. And this type of decoupaging is just called a water transfer. Um, super simple, super easy, and I always have really good results with it. So you should give it a try. Now you're just going to pick up that plastic sleeve with the graphic on it and lay it right where you want it. And the nice thing about this is if you can just really gently move it around if it's not centered exactly where you want it, just be very careful because it is very um, fragile. And then you're just going to press it down with your fingertips and get all those little wrinkles and air bubbles out the best that you can. And when doing this technique, you always want to have the same color background as a napkin. So that's why you want the white on the white, or you will be able to see the outline of the napkin. Very gently peel away that plastic sleeve. Make sure you're not bringing up the napkin and it is adhered perfectly to your project. And then I just like to take a little bit of saran wrap kind of rolled up in a ball and just if there are any wrinkles or bubbles left, you can just press them out with that and it'll uh, get rid of them. I've let it dry completely and now I'm going to put a top coat and because this is probably going to be outside on either my covered deck or porch, um, I'm going to put my Verithane Outdoor Polyacrylic Sealer in a matte finish. I like using the outdoor because it's a lot more durable than the indoor, especially if you're going to have your project outside. And I'm going to put a real good coat over the whole project and then set it aside and let it dry.
next project this rusty old bucket and I'm gonna just dry brush just latex paint over it just to kind of brighten it up a little bit because I do want to put graphics on it also and if I was just to put it on just the raw pail uh, you wouldn't be able to see them very well so I'm just putting a real dry brush coat of white latex paint all over the whole pail okay hang on there's a ding in the side of it I'm gonna bang it out with my hammer so hold tight I'm gonna have a little bit of a wiggly camera for a second and I'm just gonna work away at this and it probably will completely almost get that dent right out of it And for this pail, I'm going to use my Vintage Market graphic. I love this one. And I'm gonna do the uh, reverse Mod Podge transfer. And you're going to print this off on your laser jet printer, reverse the text, and then you're gonna Mod Podge it onto the pail. So I'm gonna put a liberal amount over the whole graphic and then stick it onto the pail and you wanna let it set overnight. And then in the morning, once it's dry, I'm going to rub off all the paper and the graphic will stay on the pail. Make sure you have it exactly where you want it on the pail because once you set it down, you can't move it. So have it lined up really well, press it down, get all the air bubbles, all the wrinkles out of it, and you're good to go. Okay, I left this overnight and now I'm gonna dampen it with a, a rag with water and you just wanna dampen it so you can start to see the graphics come through and then you're going to take off the paper. This is a little bit of a fiddly technique. Sometimes it works perfect. Sometimes you might have little bits and pieces that rub off where you don't want it to. I don't mind that because when I'm using this technique, it's always usually in a, th a farmhouse theme um, decor or a sign where I don't mind if it looks a little bit rustic. And especially when you're doing it on metal, it seems to not adhere as well as a wooden painted surface. So just be patient, give it a try. And um, if it doesn't work out the first time, paint over and try again. Okay, all finished and I'm gonna put the same Verathane outdoor finish on this pail also. And sometimes when you do this technique, you'll find that there's kind of like a cloudy bit left on from the paper. When you put this sealer on, it will get rid of most of that cloudiness. And this one looks so rustic and farmhouse. I love it. I can't wait to put a plant in it. Okay, now to tackle this big planter. Um, I think I'm just gonna take the handles right off of it because I don't know how I'll get that wooden piece off that other end. So they're quite easy to pull off. I'm just gonna take them off, set them aside, put them in my shed because I'll use them on some other project. And I decided I wanted to do the salt and pepper painting technique on this. I want it to kind of have a faux cement um, finish. So I'll put the recipe down below. This is an awesome recipe to create that cement look and it's really easy. So I'm just gonna, it's probably gonna take two coats, maybe sometimes three coats, but I'm gonna put a nice liberal amount over this whole project. It has a real nice grainy stone finish to it with the salt and pepper added into the paint and uh, I love using it. And now on to the second coat, and you will kind of want to dab it on. You don't want to put too many brush strokes in it. And now for the finishing touch, you're gonna to take some of that pepper and you're gonna take your brush and the second coat is still wet. So while it's still wet, you're gonna take your pepper and just dab it into that wet paint, just kind of randomly all over the whole pail, and it'll give that rock cement finish look. 
And again, I have a full tutorial on this recipe and other projects that I've done with it. So check that out after you've watched this one. Okay, now it's completely dried and I'm gonna use my um, polyurethane spray and seal it all up really well. I didn't want to brush on, I wanted to just use the spray so I could keep that um, cement looking finish and this should be good to set outside too with this formula. Okay, all finished and I love the way that they turned out. They're gonna look fantastic on my deck and on my porch. And the best thing about it is they were all free. Other than the cost of the little tiny bit of paint, I've upcycled these, give them a new life, and I love when I can do that. There's no better feeling than taking junk and making it pretty and saving it from the landfill. So find some old pails and buckets, turn some junk into something pretty. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I love to read them. I'll be sharing so many more DIY, thrifting, repurposing videos, so if you aren't already following along, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, and that will let you know when I upload my next video. See you real soon. Take care, and have a great day.